Hi guys, um, okay, so Fenzie here at, uh, down at Fensmere at the moment. Um, it's been a long time since I did a post. Um, so uh, it's uh, getting exciting times. Obviously we've had our first five clients or first five groups um, fish Fensmere on the week on week off basis. And uh, it was an incredibly successful period. Um, 33 fish were landed over the course of those five weeks. Um, many 70s, many 60s biggest one being the general at 65.8 which was fantastic andy's fish went to 72 and a half um the big scale was up at upper 60s 67 67 and a half um and other 60s and and multiple 50s more than i think two-thirds of the fish came out were were over 50 pounds so really really good result for the first opening of uh, of the lake so we were super stoked here for fish farmers now though it's the frothy time it's the time when we're getting ready to um, get excited about the fish spawning and uh, unlike previous years where I've set up a more clinical approach to, to spawning um, and selected brood stock etc this year I haven't done that this year because I've taken all the snags out of Fensmere and because the leanies within Fensmere are now sexually mature I'm going to let nature take its course but what I'm doing is is a, a sort of a two-edged uh, approach one, I'm going to collect the eggs from the fish that spawn in Fensmere, which is the big big females, obviously, and uh, hopefully we get that cross with the leanies and some, obviously, just French fish. Um, but because I've taken out uh, all of the major snags, their normal area for spawning is now not there. So uh, the, the approach I'm using is I've made spawning ropes, which I've just placed, and I'll show you in a second how they look. Um, the idea there being is that obviously biomass in a fishery is super important and without um, you know having to drain a lake and net a lake each year or every few years to reduce that biomass, trying to reduce the actual fish that come through is vitally important. Obviously that can be done with predators, which we have here with perch and pike etc in, in Fensmere. And obviously the roach and other fish that are in there are always going to eat those eggs. But if I can strip out as many eggs as possible and reduce the amount of potential for small fish to come through, then again, I'm, I'm, I'm actually hedging the bets and trying to keep the biomass as low as possible in here so that those big fish can just keep getting bigger. Um, and I don't have to suffer the problems that many fisheries get where they get too much, too many small fish coming through, um, which impedes the growth of the, of the larger fish and the better fish and also disrupts the overall um, biomass and, and health of the waterway because obviously the more fish you've got, the more ammonia you get, the more nitrates, nitrites, etc. And then the more problems you can have in summertime with low DO2 levels. So anyway, so that's enough wobbling on. Um, I'm just going to show you what we've done. You can see it in the background here. So these are my spawning ropes. This is an area where the fish used to love to spawn. So what I've done is I've created these with some shade sails. Um, my good mate Anthony uh, is the method that he used. Um, I get three ply rope. I'll show you a little, I'll put some little photos in here later. Three ply rope. I pull uh, a two metre section through or several two metre sections through of, of this um, lightweight um, shade type cloth. Obviously uh, it floats up like weeds. It's very soft, very easy to manage. And I've strung this out on a bank here underneath uh, an existing tree where they used to spawn and uh, and I've done the same now in several other areas around the lake. Once they've spawned, um, I will come along. I'll have the tank on the back of the ute. Sorry, that's an Aussie term for uh, for a, a truck. And uh, I shall take them up into a prepared tank that I have at the fish farm, where they will probably within the course of around two two weeks they will go through their hatching, eat their egg sacs. Um, it's been prepped up there. It was limed in the winter. As well as liming, it's been um, manured. Um, it's full of Daphne and full of life at the moment uh, with a small algal bloom on, which will only get better, forming a fantastic environment for these small pinheads to thrive in for about three to four weeks. Then I will do a, a, a quick assessment of how many fish we've got. I will take roughly 3,000. Um, you, you're not gonna be able to assess and, and look and see what so, sort of quality those fish are. It's gotta be a bit of hit and miss there. But I'll take around 3,000 and put them into what was the Leany Pond, which is an, uh, another pond that's been prepared at the fish farm. They will then grow through this summer. Early autumn, I will do a grading, my initial first grading, which then I shall select the, 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 the shooters, the best fish that I want. 
Um, somewhere around a thousand fish will be we kept in this first part of the winter. Then at the end of winter, I'll do another grading and reduce that biomass in there down for those fish to thrive for one more summer before they'll get moved up into the 1.5 acre lake up at, up at Fensmere Fish Farm. So there we go, guys, a little update on what's happening. Um, probably um, blubbered on a little bit too long, but hopefully that keeps you up to speed with what's going on here and, uh, and what we're doing. So a uh, quick little look around the lake. Look, it's looking absolutely bloody marvelous. Water quality is really good at the moment. DO2 is good. Yeah, it's all looking, all looking hunky-dory. All right, catch you later, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.